As of recording this video, Alien Romulus has been in theaters for almost a week. So I thought it'd be fun to look back on the Alien franchise and pick out 10 WTF moments. And there were plenty to choose from. Because even in the worst Alien film, there's usually one or two what the hell did I just see moments. So I whittled it down to 10 and I'm bringing it to you right now. Before we get down to business, if you wouldn't mind Xenomorph Acid spitting that subscribe button so you don't miss one of these in the future, I would really appreciate it. I post movie reviews, live streams, and now top 10 videos every single week on the channel. Would love to have you on board. All right, let's go to the 10 spot. Alien Resurrection, that old chestnut. Here's the deal. As far as I'm concerned, the Alien movies are all pretty solid outside of two. I do not like Alien 3, although it has its fans. And it has its moments. I don't care for that film. And I really hate Alien Coven shit. Alien and Aliens were so freaking good. To then drop off a cliff with Alien 3, taking five years off and then revisiting this franchise with fresh eyes and a new tone was kind of a welcome treat for me. This campy, it's corny, it's incredibly over the top, it's disgusting. It's just a different vibe. But I was okay with it because it felt fresh again. Now, if Alien 3 matched the greatness of Alien and Aliens, then obviously Alien Resurrections would be just terrible to follow up with. But 3 dropped the ball. So in that sense, Resurrections, kind of fun. What wasn't so fun was seeing Sigourney Weaver's disfigured body in different test tubes. Resurrections pulled the old Palpatine clone trick before Rise of Skywalker did. This shit is haunting. As the crew walks around the corridor looking at naked, deformed clone versions of Ripley. On paper, yeah, that might be kind of kinky and hot. It wasn't. It was not. Even Ron Perlman's walking around this place going, for once, I'm not the ugliest thing in the room. In the number nine spot, we turn to alien coven shit. Specifically to David, the creator of the xenomorph. That's right, lovable synthetic David was down on Wheat Planet in a cave, mixing spices and herbs and some alien DNA and a little bit of engineer mixture. Oh yes, and the remnants of Shaw, the main protagonist from the last alien film, Prometheus. She died off camera because that's what we do in these films. We kill off major characters and put it in a text crawl or some shit. David combined the engineer's black goo with Elizabeth Shaw's reproductive organs. We see that in a tasteful shot showcasing her sprawled out in a table, rib cage opened, organs completely removed. <sighs> I hate this movie. There's a few adages out there that come to mind. Less is more. Fear the unknown. Right, Ridley Scott? When you go back and you start giving everything backstories and showing exactly how they were created and weaponized, it starts to lose its weight. The fear factor starts to subside, and instead you're thinking of goofy engineers getting bodied by xenomorphs and then turned into black goo and then turned into this and that, and I'm over it. I'm not sure if I started this video warning you that there's going to be spoilers for Alien Romulus, but uh, there's going to be spoilers for Alien Romulus, and one of them's happening right now. Pretty early in the film, we're introduced to a synthetic from the waist up. Ian Holm is back, baby! Even though he's dead in real life, we deep faked this son of a gun, or some I don't know what they did, to be honest. Not the most realistic looking impersonation I've ever seen. Not outright awful by any means, but uh, yeah. I mean, you can tell that their budget was a little scanter than the average bear. It was definitely a what the fuck moment though. I did not expect to see Bilbo Baggins Humpty Dumpty back to life for one more outing in an alien film, especially when the guy died in 2020. But they got his likeness. It was a very wild scene. And it was not one and done. He shows up throughout Alien Romulus on different TV screens and intercoms. So it's not just a quick two minute sequence and out the door. And oddly, overall, I did not hate this moment, but it does feel like something they could have easily left out, played entirely for nostalgia. And to be clear, this is not the same Ash. That dude died in the first Alien film in 1979. This is just another of that same model. So even though it's definitely playing the nostalgia angle, it actually does make sense in the storyline. In the number seven spot is an awesome inclusion created by James Cameron himself for the Alien franchise, something that would become canon going forward, and that's the Alien Queen. The first Alien film is shrouded in mystery. Not only do we have 
face huggers and chest bursters and these evil giant black liquid squid looking aliens that don't have names. There's also the space jockey skeleton in that first film. What is that all about? How did this ship crash here? There's just layer on top of layer of mystery which gives aliens such a cool vibe. In Aliens, James Cameron reigns it in a little bit, gives some lore to the overall thing. We have xenomorphs now. We learn of their nesting areas. And the big reveal comes late in the game when Ripley walks into a freaking den with a giant queen alien inside. And the alien queen exists not only for the lore. That, I think that's secondary to the storytelling here. I think the main concept here is to juxtapose the alien queen being a mother to these little xenomorph babies with Ripley, who's also acting like a mother bear to Newt, this estranged girl that she finds and she's going to protect until Alien 3 kills her off camera. We'll get there. We'll get there. But it's an amazing contrast. It shows the xenomorphs are not mindless killing machines. The queen will do anything to protect her babies. Ripley realizes that and points her freaking fire gun right at one of the eggs. Like... Your move, bitch. Such a freaking kick-ass scene in a film. And it should probably be higher up if I'm gonna be honest with you, but it's okay. I'm just getting the ball rolling. I would love if you put your own in the comments below. In the number six spot is something from Prometheus. Prometheus, the kind of alien film, the one that's off in the corner, not quite dedicating its time to a xenomorph movie, but instead branching into the lore even more giving us backstory of things we really did not need or want to know about, but because it looks so freaking good, I can't help but like this movie. It's entirely superficial. <laughs> like, it just looks so damn good. Its sound design is brilliant. There's some amazing sequences in this film, even though the people are dumb as hell. But the final moments of the picture is where things really go, holy shit, that happened. Where an engineer is killed, and what rips through his chest cavity is a close version of a xenomorph. This is an angsty teenage xenomorph. He's like, I don't like it here, I don't want it here. I sure hope someone makes me better in the future. And David's like, I got you. I got you, bro. Prometheus was shrouded in mystery when those trailers dropped. There were shots in the trailers and, of course, in the film that lead, that tease to a xenomorph reveal later. Although, <laughs> like, in the cave area of Prometheus, about halfway through when the scientists are checking things out, there's like a xenomorph mural up on the up on the wall. I don't know how that happened. I don't know how they got there because they don't know what these things look like yet. Somehow they had a vision or something. The problem with making prequels to try to explain away some of the things in your other movies is you end up piling more bullshit on top of it, making it even harder in the future to explain that away. It's the Lost effect. The TV show Lost, when they spent like four seasons straight throwing mystery after mystery at the audience. And then at some point they're like, oh God, we should probably answer like 50% of these questions, but they don't make any sense. Anyway, the end of this movie's freaking great. I love the design of that creature, and it was so fun seeing that reveal. The middle section of this top 10 is really dedicated to the kids. Lots of baby stuff going on, lots of bad parenting going on. In the number five, we have Alien Romulus Baby. This thing is nightmare fuel. You either see this reveal on the big screen and you go, <gasps> like my audience did, or you go, <laughs> what the fuck is that? Like I'm sure others did. My initial reaction was, what the f And then it comes into light, I'm like, oh, okay, that's an interesting design choice. And then you see more of it, and you're like, oh, oh God. And you kind of go back and forth, or at least I did, it ebbs and flows. I was having a lot of emotional inner struggles. I'm like, do I like this design? This is awful. Is it worse than Alien Resurrections? Is it better? Where are we at? The bottom line was it was the first time in Romulus that it really went somewhere interesting, even if it is more of a callback to Alien Resurrections. It still had a brand new design, combining an engineer-esque face with that of a deformed giant dude with fucking shit coming out his back and an alien silky smooth body. It was awesome looking. And it was mostly done with practical effects and a real actor. 
Up until that point in the movie, I was on board with the film. I was having a good time. I liked the action. I, lo I loved the cinematography in this film. It's a beautiful movie. But when that final act dropped, which is going to either put people way off from the film overall, or it's going to bring them into the fold more, which it did for me, I was all in. I'm like, oh shit, we're getting a little creepy now. We got some thrills in this thing. And it's making some solid money at the box office, so I think it's going to have legs and we might get more of this disgusting character in the future. Hopefully not. <laughs> I think I'm good. I think I'm good on that guy. In the fourth spot, I already mentioned it, but it's Alien Resurrection and the final scene where we have a baby reveal. It's a boy! Or something. I don't know what the fuck it is. It's disgusting! Ripley number eight. She's the eighth clone, I believe. It's been a while since I've seen Resurrections, but uh, this is not the original Ripley. She's been cloned via DNA they found from something somewhere once upon a time. Who cares? Using modern scientific technology, they were able to bring her back from the dead a new version of Phoenix Reborn, risen from the ashes. But this Phoenix had a baby inside as well. I, th I think. I'm, I'm pretty sure they pulled out an alien embryo from her body. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. It was very convoluted at the time. I would have to go back and watch. The logistics out of the way of how any of this came to be. The final product remains. We have this disgusting, deformed... Queen pulsating, bloated, festering, sweaty, malformed slug for a butt. That's an Earthworm Jim reference for the one of you that understood that. And it rips the fucking throat of the queen alien because that's not who it identifies as mom. It's like, you're not my mommy. <laughs> not my mommy. Where is she? Where is Rachel? Sorry, I went off into a Christian Bale thing. Baby Ripley Jr. gets onto the ship. And it's up against the window, like Dr. Evil in Austin Powers 1 looking at his son Scott. Like, give me a hug. Come on. Just a little, just, just a little squeeze. Come on. Don't make me stand here like a freaking idiot. I'm hip. I'm with it. Tucka, 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 tucka. Oh. And Ripley's like, oh God, how am I going to get out of this? Um, all right, let's, let's, let's do this. She's like, it's okay, child. I love you. I love. I love you. <laughs> and then the glass pierces open and baby Ripley Jr. gets sucked against it. Mommy! Mommy! And the skin and the fat starts shooting out the window. <laughs> it's so gross. And his puppy dog eyes. <laughs> Goodbye, my love. And it goes out. And Ripley's noticeably upset about the whole thing. I mean, it's not the alien's fault it was born like that. It just wanted its mom. You almost feel bad. If it wasn't so ugly, I would feel bad for it. <laughs> I think it's only a probe, short for appropriate, that we put Alien 3, or Alien Cubed for none, in the number three spot. There are people, maybe even you watching, that unironically like this film, and that's fine. You have bad taste, that's, that's okay. I like Alien Resurrection. We all have our hill to die on, don't we? But no, not even the director, David Fincher, who was thrown into this pile of ass, likes the film. People will say, you should watch the director's cut. It's not a director's cut. He cut himself out as director. He wants nothing to do with this film. But I've heard the case from those that like it. And listen, I don't care if you like something. That's great. Good for you. I, I wish I was in your shoes because then you have a great trilogy. You have, you have this fantastic set of films. But for me, the biggest what the fuck moment was the entire storyline here. The look of this film on a dingy prison planet with a bunch of awful men who have to pretend to be religious so they don't freaking take advantage of this hot ass woman. She has to shave her head bald. We have a bald, dirty Ripley who just survived two alien films, multiple xenomorph attacks, multiple ship crashes, only to wind up solo with Newton Hicks dead, who she tried to protect the entire last film. That's completely ripped away. Every piece of goodwill that aliens had going for it is stripped gone to the bone. Because now we have a more intense, intimate film with a solo xenomorph again that ripped through the chest cavity of poor little Newt. 
Keep in mind, Newton Hicks are killed off camera via text scroll. All we see are their remains on the ship. It's no secret to pretty much everyone out there that Alien 3 went through production hell, had multiple rewrites on the days of shooting. Fincher's putting in his own versions and trying to make sense of this mess. Fox Studio is threatening to shut this shit down every other day. It went through several writers, several directors. This was Fincher's first big project coming off of music videos. And so what we have here for a final product is just an overall ugly fucking mess. And then on top of that, we have a straight up rip off ending from Terminator 2 Judgment Day where Ripley sacrifices herself because there's a xenomorph inside of her. Oh, and don't worry. She was very much suffering throughout this entire film after surviving two movies of absolute torture and unrest. She's treated, we get to watch our hero suffer more and more and more. In her final act of courage, she drops in complete pain as a chest burster rips from her stomach. Fuck you, Alien 3. We're done. In the number two spot, is the xenomorph design itself. How do I not put this high up on the list? It's the freaking xenomorph design. The first time seeing this badass drop down from the rain, come up all menacing, take a look at Samuel Brett just before his lights go out forever, and then skull fuck him into oblivion? It's freaking cinema, man. When that second mouth pulsates out, holy crap, I was blown away. There's a reason why the Xenomorph and the Predator withstood the test of time as iconic creature design. Because they're freaking awesome! And they have those cool mouths. The Predator's got a... <laughs> opens up. Alien's like, uh-uh, I got the double mouth going on. And in the number one spot, we're going right back to Alien with the most iconic scene in all of Alien history. The scene that comes up anytime it's mentioned, and that is the moment we get our first chest buster reveal. John Hurt goes from a fun loving guy hanging out with his buddies in the kitchen, having some grub, to a dude convulsing on the floor, looking down at his ripped open chest just before dying as a little baby xenomorph <laughs> bursts out of the guy's chest, spackling blood all over the mess hall, then it scampers across the floor like an asshole, leaving what's left of John Hurt dead on the floor. There's also been a rumor surrounding this scene for many years that the cast did not know that this thing was gonna burst from John Hurt's chest. Even a Hurt, who kind of was vaguely aware what was going on, was still a little bit in the dark. Now, I couldn't really find a real source on this, so take it with a grain of salt. Regardless of what they did and did not know, the final product speaks for itself. Everyone has a look of pure shock on their face. It's so well executed. Well, there you have it. My top 10 WTF moments from the Alien franchise. Again, there's a lot more. There's so many more that I could have put on here. But these are the ones that I go to. These are the ones that came to me like a vision. And so there you go. I want to hear from you, though. Please put your top 10 or just a couple that I didn't say in the comments below. Like the video, subscribe. Again, I would really appreciate it if you stuck around the channel. I post videos every week, having a good time here, talking movies exclusively. Would love to have you stick around. If you want something from me non-movie related, I do have a second channel, Adam Does Rants, where I'm ranting about first world problems up and down the block. It's supposed to be more comedy skit based, talking about things most of us can relate to and hopefully I can get you to laugh once or twice a video. Then I've done my job and I can go to sleep well at night. Lastly, if you want to really do me a solid, maybe think about supporting my one-man operation, this one-man band, by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. There's hundreds of exclusive videos, plus you're just doing me a solid, and I would appreciate it. All right, hopefully I see you around. Take care.